In the last video, we talked about how we could maximize utility given a budget constraint. We found that in order to maximize utility, the first order conditions and the second order condition have to be satisfied. In this video, we will talk about what happens when we actually solve for an optimal quantity of good 1 and good 2. And at the end of the video, we'll see that the optimal demand for goods 1 and 2 would actually depend on the consumer's income or budget and the prices of the goods. So here, we'll be using a Cobb-Douglas utility function. So u, our example function would be u, which is a function of x sub 1 and x sub 2, would be equal to x sub 1 raised to 0 0.6, x sub 2 raised to 0 0.4. So I won't go through the process of proving the convexity of this function. However, uh, I, we already know that this is already convex. So we only have to think about the first order conditions which are the first, uh, the, the first first order condition for a utility maximization problem here is that the consumer has to use up his budget. Use up his budget meaning M has to be equal to P1 X1 plus P2 X2. If M is less than P1 X1 plus P2 X2, then the consumer cannot afford that um, bundle and if M is greater than P1 X1 plus P2 X2 then that means the consumer does not use up all of his budget so again M has to be equal to P1 X1 plus P2 X2 the second first order condition is that the slope of the indifference curve is equal to the slope of the budget line because we are looking for that one tangent point where the indifference curve of the consumer touches the budget line. And from what we discussed in the last video, the point there when we try to manipulate that equation, we get mu1 over p1 is equal to mu2 mu2 over p2. So again, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to maximize maximize utility which is a function of x1 and x2 equal to x1 0 0.6 x2 0 0.4 subject to the budget constraint of m is equal to p1 x1 x1 plus p2 x2 and so in order to find the optimal quantities of good 1 and 2, we actually have to follow the two first order conditions or satisfy the two first order conditions we have. So in order to do this, we have to first fill out the unknowns. P1, P2, so P1, P2, and M are what we call exogenous variables, meaning they are given or from external sources. And what we're trying to find is actually x sub 1 and x sub 2. So automatically, um, we can't find that just yet. So the only thing that's pretty apparent or um, what the only thing that we can find right now is actually mu1 and mu2. In our previous videos, mu1, uh, we discussed that mu1 is actually just equal to the partial derivative of your utility function with respect to x sub 1 and mu2 is just equal to partial u with respect to x sub 2. And what we find here is that uh, mu1 is just 0 0.6 x sub 1 raised to negative 0 0.4 times x sub 2 raised to 0 0.4. And for mu2, uh, it's just 0 0.4 uh, times x sub 1 raised to 0 0.6 times x sub 2 raised to negative 0 0.6. And so there we have it. We have mu1 and mu2. And now we could just substitute this into the second first order condition. So when we substitute that, I'll just scroll down here. When we substitute that, 
it becomes 0 0.6 x sub 1 raised to negative 0 0.4 x sub 2 raised to 0 0.4 over p1 is equal to 0 0.4 x sub 1 raised to 0 0.6 x sub 2 raised to negative 0 0.6 all over p2. And once we cross multiply, we can actually see that um, this will become 0 0.6 uh, x sub 2 p2 is equal to 0 0.4 uh, x sub 1 p1. Further simplifying, we get 3 x sub 2 p2 is equal to 2 x sub 1 p1. Again, we are looking for x sub 1 and x sub 2, so we try to isolate x sub 1 and x sub 2 here. And in this case, it's fairly simple as we just divide both sides by, uh, we're looking for x sub 1, we just divide both sides by 2p1. So divide both sides by 2p1, what we get is that uh, x sub 1 is equal to 3x sub 2 p2 over 2p1. On the other hand, x sub 2 is just equal to 2x sub 1 p1 over 3p2. Now our values for x sub 1 and x sub 2 here are both, uh, both satisfy the second first order condition. However, we still have to subject this to the first first order condition, which is the budget constraint. So the other first order condition that we haven't subject our x sub 1 and x sub 2 to is the budget constraint. So m equals p1 x1 plus p2 x2. And so what we have to do now so that our x sub 1 and x sub 2 would be subject to the other first order condition is simply to substitute our results here, our results here. We simply substitute our results here into the budget constraint. So now what happens is uh, m, I'm going to use x sub 1 first, m p1 would be multiplied to 3 x sub 2 p2 over 2 p1 close parentheses plus p2 x2 and so simplifying we could just take out the p sub 1 here and multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the um, denominator and so what we find is 2m would be equal to 3 x2 p2 plus 2 p2 x2. So adding those two up, we get 5x2p2 would be equal to 2m. And since we're looking for x sub 1 and x sub 2, we actually want to uh, isolate x sub 2 here. So x sub 2 would now be equal to 2m over 5p2. And Again, uh, let's rewrite this. We see that x sub 2 is actually now dependent on the values of m and p2. If m increases, x sub 2 increases. If p2 increases, x sub 2 decreases. So we actually see that x sub 2 is actually a function or is actually dependent on m, p1, and p2 which is equal to 2m over 5p2. When we do the same thing, uh, we do the same thing for uh, x sub 2. So we plug in the um, thing we saw here, uh, we found here, into the second or the first first order condition. And so what we find here is uh, m is equal to p1 x1 plus p2 times uh, 2 oh, 
times 2 x1 p1 over 3 p2 close parentheses and again simplifying we'll get 3 m is equal to 3 p1 x1 plus 2 x1 p1 and this would be 3 m is equal to 5 p1 x1 isolating x1 we find um, x sub 1 would be equal to 3 m over 5 p1 and so we have found um, x sub 1 is also actually a function of m p1 and p2 so now we can rewrite this also as x sub 1 is a function of m p1 and p2 is equal to 3m over 5p1. And what we call these um, quantities are actually our uncom uncompensated demand. So we denote these as x1 star and x2 star. These are our uncompensated demand demand, also called as our Marshallian demand. The star are not um, exponents, they're simply superscripts to signify that these uh, quantities, the quantity that we get from this equation or this function, are optimal. So these are the optimal consumptions of good 1 and good 2, given um, m, p1, and p2. So, moving on, how do we use these quantities to find what our utility level is? Simply, we could just um, substitute x1 star and x sub x2 star into our utility function. So a while ago, again, I'll just rewrite it. Our utility function was u, as a function of x sub 1 and x sub 2 was equal to x sub 1 raised to 0 0.6 and x sub 2 raised to 0 0.4. But now that we know the optimal quantities that the consumer has to consume to maximize utility, we want to know what the utility level is um, when the consumer consumes the optimal quantities. So now, u, we substitute the... Um, x1 star and x2 star here, u as a function of x1 star and x2 star would now be equal to would now be equal to um, actually this would be u x1 star uh, x1 which is a function of m p1 P2, close parentheses, comma, x sub 2, m, p1, p2, close parentheses. So, we, so this would now become equal to, actually, we see that u now becomes a function of not x sub 1 and x sub 2 only, but then um, in a general, more general form, um, u now becomes a function of m, p1, and p2. And once we get this um, utility function as a function of m, p1, and p2, this is what we call, this, this here is what we call our indirect utility function. So, this is our indirect utility function, and this here is our direct utility function, uf. So when we substitute x1 star and x2 star into our direct utility function, what we find is our indirect utility function, which is denoted by u star is denoted by u star or simply v as others call it. 
So in our example, our indirect utility function, let me just scroll down a bit again. So our in our example, our indirect utility function is actually equal to um, x1 star raised to 0 0.6 times x2 star raised to 0 0.4. And so this is simply equal to 3m over 5p1 raised to 0 0.6 times uh, 2m over 5p2 raised to 0 0.4. And so this would now be equal to m because points, uh, m raised to 0 0.6 times m raised to 0 0.4 is m raised to 1 times... 3 raised to 0 0.6 times 2 raised to 0 0.4 all over um, 5 5 raised to 0 0.6 times 5 raised to 0 0.4 is 5 times p sub 1 raised to 0 0.6 times p sub 2 raised to 0 0.4 and this here is our indirect utility function. Now, when we are given the indirect utility function, or when, as soon as we find our indirect utility function, we can actually find um, the optimal quantity of good one and good two using Roy's identity. So if we have the indirect utility function and we do not know our um, uncompensated demand or our Marshallian demand, we can actually use Roy's identity to find them. So Roy's identity says that uh, xi star is equal to is equal to the partial of our indirect utility function with respect to uh, p1 pi over partial of indirect utility function with respect to m. Okay, so. If we are looking for the optimal quantity of good 1, then x sub i would actually be x sub 1 star equal to partial v over partial p sub i, in this case is 1, over partial v with respect to m. On the other hand, uh, x sub 2 star or x 2 star would now be equal to partial v with respect to price of good 2 over partial v over uh, with respect to uh, 